I'll have you know, a little birdie put it in my ear. That's worth a Google. Your match this past week on Wednesday night. Oh boy. The highest rated quarter hour in dynamite history. Oh, stop it. <laughs> not just the highest rated quarter hour of hour two, not just the highest rated quarter hour of the episode, Jeez, stop. not just the highest rated quarter hour of the quarter <laughs> of the pay-per-view season of the calendar year uh, in AEW history. Fans were behind you. They were chanting, we want Jeff. I saw baby women throwing their babies in the air. They were so excited that you were finally going to take your place mm. at the head of the table. Oh, God. <laughs> um, Jeff, what happened? Oh, uh, buddy. I gave him my all. Sometimes, you know, um, life uh, doesn't always turn out the way. Uh, I said that uh, in, in uh, some comments this weekend. Doesn't always turn out the way we expect it to. But what do, what, what are we to do except look at life as um, no obstacles, just opportunities? Um, Connie, I can't. I can tell you this much, and you don't get paid, um, you know, uh, on, on effort alone. But the effort that I put in last Wednesday, I, I will say this. And Karen came over to me about. So central time starts at seven. I think we went on about eight 20, eight 30 or something like that. So she came over around, I don't know, six Conrad. And she, I can laugh about it now, but she's dead serious. And she said, I'm not going to come back around you again till, uh, it's time to go out. I love you. And gave me a big hug. She knew I was dialed in and I was, I was definitely dialed in. Didn't work. Didn't turn out Connie, but, uh, the effort was there. The emotion was there. Uh, the wind trust arena. Um, I'll remember that. I will, I will remember the match. I'll just say that. I'll, I'll, I will remember that night. Didn't turn out the way I wanted, but I would definitely remember the night. I saw a lot of people online saying that it was one of their favorite matches of yours. Maybe one of the best matches they had seen from Jeff Jarrett. When you saw that feedback. What did you think? I, I, I definitely, it was special to me, not so much for the mechanics, um, you know, um, I, I was about to say in 2024, I don't think you can expect a banger out of the last outlaw, but also I think in 1986, you might not have expected a banger match as the kids call it. Uh, but as far as the emotional investment in it, that was, um, that was, you know, cause we often talk about uh, all that creative subjective. Uh, but to me, one of the things that's just not subjective is, is that, that the, the, the way to resonate is, is the emotional investment. And I was emotionally invested in that. Um, and, and the people in the arena, um, and I'll go ahead and share it now, um, did Memphis this weekend and, and um, collision and I did media on Friday, but as I was uh, got done Friday night, um, I was driving back up Walnut Grove a street in Memphis, which is where Lawler used to live. And I just texted him and I said, Hey man, uh, you know, just a quick thing. He ended up calling me and we talked and uh, he joked. He said, what about you in the ring having these matches? But anyway, we just kind of went back and forth uh, in a man. It was so good to talk to him. Um, I don't know how long we talked, 35, 40 minutes. Um, but we kind of get, got into that, that, um, I bet I told him on that call three times, uh, Conrad. Yep. I, I learned that from you. And, and I said, you're preaching to the choir and I'd say it back to him. I, I said, I know I'm preaching to the choir back and forth, but, but just kind of the, 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 um, the people in the arena in Chicago, and I don't want to, I'd rather let others talk about it, but you watched it. Uh, you said you watched it actually with some family members. Um, I, I think that the feedback and, and, and the, the, the voicemails and the texts at just, um, the comments, uh, I, I think at the very core of it, and this is what me and Jerry kind of ended up landed uh, on. 
it's one of the reasons why we all love professional wrestling because you can get caught up in certain matches and stories and storylines. But if there is a real set of circumstances that are, I'll just say reality based. And for me, it was a lot of reality based. It is easily just, I don't say you want to believe you believe it's not like you have to want to believe. And so it, it, you just get caught up in the moment. And, and for me, I I'm still biggest wrestling fan. I know. Um, and that's what it was all about. And the, the, what the Chicago folks in the, in the house, um, it was cool. They were to me, they were emotionally invested. And when I locked the sharpshooter on, um, man, they came up and, in my brain, so did I. It was a, it was a fun moment. Shivani commented on it that that was a fun moment for him as well. And um, damn Conrad, who in the hell would have thought we'd been talking about this in 2024? I've got a sharpshooter in the, in the ring on uh, a former AEW World Champion and on his return match, and he's been off a couple of months. It was a very surreal night for me in so many ways, but uh, I'm very grateful for it. I'll say that. Coach Rosie is with us here live and he wants to know, how did you feel physically and emotionally after your epic match against hangman? Well, I've said this over and over and over wrestling once every month or whatever, or a couple of weeks or whatever it is. Um, maybe I'm a little delusional, but man, it, it takes a, a toll because of it's it just the rhythm and the cadence and all that. Um, but you know, I got right back on that cardio bike. Uh, literally I did my stretching the following morning, uh, before, uh, I came home 4th of July, I did some more stretching. Um, it just, you know, it, the, the recovery time I had to dial in on it and, and do what I got to do emotionally. Um, and I don't know if Conrad, you you've seen the the the, the comments that I made um, just the, the, the this past weekend, but I had a conversation on Friday with somebody that I respect a lot, um, and that you know it's like because I've asked myself why do I get still upset? I mean, Conrad was the Owen episode episode one is anyway one two or three. I, I know it was er, early, and I I got emotional then. I've talked about. Um, you know, in 2017 in the darkest part of my life. And I referenced that and you kind of peeling the layers of the onion back, got emotional. Then, um, this weekend they asked for comments and it's, I, and I ask, I'm like, my God, what, what is the, what, why, why does it still come out? So, so raw in, in a way, a lot of ways. And, and, and the guy that I've talked to who I respect a, a lot and what he does, he said, Jeff, this, this don't take this the wrong way. I don't think he used those words, but he said, knowing what I know and dealing with what I've dealt with, it's pretty easy for me to understand you care, which is a good thing. Like you, you really care, care for Owen, cared for Owen past tense, present tense, er everything, but also, um, uh, it hurt you. It, 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 it was an emotional hurt. Uh, that you never process 17 now, however long, you know, it's 25 years ago now. Um, and, and so uh, Coach Rosie's question, how'd I feel emotionally? It, it is it is still a ro roller coaster. Um, um, I think Wednesday is going to be another emotional roller coaster. Uh, so the emotional part of it, um, I don't think that uh, you feel what you feel. Uh, and you can't, you know, you, you can kind of compartmentalize, which I became an expert at in my <laughs> years, but th that's, that's not healthy. And so I think you just kind of have to process, I have to process the emotions and live it and breathe it and then move on through them. I was not processing the emotions so well this past Wednesday night. I was very, very disappointed and tweeted F this, Whew. No, that got a little bit off. Conrad, I did not catch that until the following day. <laughs> well, it got a lot of reaction from me. People who were like, did you really think Jeff Jarrett was going to win? And then that damn dirty, rotten scoundrel hangman, Adam page 
There's a little twist that I saw on social media. Maybe this story's not over. From what I understand, you're going to be the last outlaw. Jeff Jarrett is going to be a special enforcer for the match in Calgary this Wednesday between Brian Danielson and Hangman Adam Page. Is that right? That is true. Um, in Memphis, collision. Uh, actually, South Haven, Mississippi. Um, he he went to maybe take a shortcut, and uh, I let it be known. I'm not coming for retaliation. Uh, hangman, I'm just going to make sure that I'm going to see this tournament through the end to the best of my ability. And it's it, it, these match, the, the finals of the match. And I, I just stopped him from using a weapon and Christian slid in the back door and more shenanigans. And so that is contrary to, uh, maybe, um, what people have seen me do for the last 30 years, but for this tournament and this tournament only, I, I want to make sure that, uh, the spirit of Owen uh, is shown through and through. And so that's going to be my job with you, Connie. You ain't going to come down the ringside and pop up with some red noses for everybody, are you? No, don't don't think that. But I may have, um, you know, I was already asked, you bringing your guitar? And I'm like, I don't know. I have to decide that. I don't know if that's a lot of honor and integrity, but I don't know. Wednesday's going to be interesting. I'll just say that, pal. Danielson, as we've just covered earlier, one of my favorites, maybe my most favorite in-ring performer as it stands today against the guy who beat me. Uh, so um, got to respect Danielson. And uh, for this finals, I respect Hangman as long as he respects me. So, I mean, I'm just saying you were just in Memphis and Nashville's right around the corner. This might be the summer of Jeff. Oh, Blood and guts coming to Bridgestone. It's crazy how the, the, the timing. Yeah, it's bizarre. I'll say that. 